D.C.'s Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, and please forgive me if I mispronounce your first name, Haisuk, Haisuk Chung. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Chung is a champion and advocate for senior services, working across agencies to ensure that older adults have access to quality health care, affordable housing, transportation, and remain safe at home. Please, with a round of applause, welcome Deputy Mayor Haisuk Chung. So great to see everybody. Hi there, my beautiful. Um, good morning, my name is Hesuk. I am the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services. Thank you so much for inviting us today. And, the, and I would just wanna uh, thank the entire team of Hattie Holmes Wellness Center for their hard work to put this together. How very exciting. And again, thanks again for everybody who's joining us today. I see some of our staff from our agency. So again, thank you so much and you're truly some of our most treasured resources in the district. So I really appreciate all of you being here. I have the privilege of working with the mayor each and every day on programs and supports around wellness and health for all of our seniors, including all of you. And I am really, really proud of all the things we're doing in partnership with DCOA. So I'm especially proud of the mayor's leadership on making DC the most age-friendly community, ensuring our seniors are able to thrive and live and um, really be prosperous in our city. So that's part of why we're here, and we continue to have conversations with all of you. I look forward to seeing you at some of the community events, at the, at the SAC um, Advocacy <laughs> Organization events, and I am really, really focused on making sure that you can live healthier, easier and more secure in our city. So with that, I'm really, really excited to uh, introduce you to you our incredible Mayor, Muriel Bowser. Happy anniversary, Hattie Holmes. You look beautiful. Let's give ourselves here at Hattie Holmes uh, a big, where's the big round of applause for 10 years? It is fantastic to, to see uh, you all here today. And as I walked in, I remembered that Hattie Holmes is 10 years old and I'm just over 10 years old in public <laughs> office. Uh, and the Hattie Holmes was the very first ribbon cutting that I participated in as a council member. And we have come a long way together, haven't we? Yeah. So I want to thank uh, Council Member Todd, who I know was here a little bit earlier, but has to get down to a meeting at the Council uh, of Governments. I want to thank all the staff here at Hattie Holmes. Let's give them a big round of applause. I saw Teresa. I want to thank uh, Director Newland, uh, who is our Director of the Office on Aging. Thank you, Director Newland. And uh, Director Chung, who you just heard from. Uh, and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for more than 10 years of trusting me to be your leader, to make decisions that are the best for Ward 4, for Kennedy Street, for Hattie Homes, uh, and for seniors across Washington, D.C. Uh, it's really my privilege uh, to be here uh, to recognize and appreciate Hattie Holmes. Some of you knew Hattie Holmes. She was your neighbor and your friend. You may have worked with her. Uh, and uh, in addition to this being the first ribbon cutting, the first, the very first piece of legislation that I moved as the ward for a council member was to name this building for Hattie Holmes. And I am just <laughs> delighted uh, to have done it. I always tell people that I'm stingy with building namings, with street namings, with keys to the city. I'm stingy with it. Uh, and the reason is uh, that we have a lot of outstanding people that make contributions to our city. Um, but when I made, name a street, I did it up at, that, at Fort Stevens for Elizabeth Thomas. Uh, when I dedicate a building like we did here with Hattie Homes, or when we give a key to the city, I want to focus on homegrown Washington residents that have contributed 
contributed to the way um, that we live. I wanted to just talk about a few things while we're here today, uh, because believe it or not, we're already starting to do things in our administration for the third time. Now, it seems like just yesterday that I was sworn in as the seventh mayor of the District of Columbia um, and the third one from Ward 4 right here. So I'm not saying anything about Ward 4, but you know how to pick them. And, uh, we have, for example, delivered uh, four state of the district addresses uh, where we could talk about how the city uh, was moving forward. I have uh, delivered three balanced budgets to the Council of the District of Columbia that have uh, committed and committed us to making the types of investments that take care of all, all Washingtonians. And I'm very proud to say um, that our investments in taking care of our senior residents has been robust in each one of those uh, of those different um, budgets. Uh, we are now in the midst of what we call the fall legislative fest. Uh, that means I've asked all of my directors to look at the law and figure out how we can better protect DC residents by changing the law. So one thing that I wanted to tell you today that I will pr be presenting to the council and I hope that you will be in full support of is the protection of seniors and vulnerable adults from financial exploitation. Uh, we'll also be talking about the vulnerable population and the Employer um, Protection Amendment Act. Now, uh, some of you know I have two, two favorite seniors in my life, my parents who are 79 and 82 uh, who live in North Michigan Park. Uh, and some of the th things that each and every one of you are encountering, I encounter uh, with them. Uh, they were, for example, able to install a walk-in tub in their home and a, a chairlift that goes up the stairs. And we want all seniors to have access to programs like this. And in Laura's office is working with the Department of Health, uh, Housing and Community Development on a program called Safe at Home. I hope you have heard of Safe at Home because hundreds of DC residents have been able to take advantage of small grants to make their homes livable so that they can age in place. Now you do know uh, the best senior housing that we have in DC is what? It's the housing that you live in right now. <laughs> That's the best senior housing that we have. And so I share your concerns that you are able to live in your housing as long as you want to. Uh, that you will be able to make the needed investments if it's a first floor uh, bathroom, if it's a handrail, if it's updates uh, to some housing code violations, that's important that we are able to work with you to get it done. And so we want to make sure that you can do that. We also know uh, that a big part of being able to live in your home as long as you want to is transportation uh, and being able to get to doctor's appointments get to church, get to Hattie Homes, get to see your friends and neighbors, and get to a job. And so that is why we have been so focused on making sure our transportation services for seniors are better um, and um, more plentiful. So in addition uh, to supporting Metro Access for people who have mobility issues, we've also supported Transport DC, and we've also supported our own uh, services that can be available. Let me just say a little bit more about some key investments that I that we hope and they are certainly intended um, to make your life rich um, and it support systems of wellness for you across the district. Uh, I already mentioned safe at home and the number uh, that we have of seniors who've already been helped is 700 seniors that have been helped. Uh, we are also and we know a key issue uh, is making sure that some seniors are or in housing that is not uh, affordable for them, or they have a lot of anxiety about how they will be able to stay in housing. So we uh, have doubled down on previous commitments to affordable housing. So in each year that I've been mayor, uh, we have invested $100 million in affordable housing programs, and many of them are focused on seniors. Right here in Ward 4, for example, many of you remember the old Hebrew home on Spring Road? Do you 
remember that? Uh, Council Member Todd was very focused in making sure that we delivered that project. And I'm proud to say that we uh, have announced a partnership wherein there will be about 200 units, new units of housing built on Spring Road. Uh, and the focus is on senior housing. So as you think about, that's good news. What we have to do uh, across our city is important. We have another, a, another program, housing program in Ward 4 that we want to be a model for the whole city. And we call it the Genesis Project. Uh, we opened up a building on Georgia Avenue across from Walter Reed. And the whole point of that building was to have an intergenerational connection going on. So half of the building is for seniors and half of the building is for young people who are exiting our foster care program who have children of their own. And so we know that that connection and that interplay between seniors who have been there and done that and know how to do it will help those young people um, know how to raise their own children. We've also launched the Alternative Pathways to Employment Program um, because one other thing that I've heard from our seniors is that you want volunteer opportunities and you may also want job opportunities. And this I heard loud and clear when I was your council member, uh, because many of you, when we were debating uh, Walmart, remember that? Seems like yesterday, but it wasn't. Uh, many of you said we want Walmart because we need to have access to quality food uh, and, and good prices. We're tired of going out to the suburbs to do it. But more than that, we know that Walmart hires seniors and we want the opportunity uh, to have uh, employment opportunities too. So we're going to keep focusing on the types of programs and services that will help you age well um, and age in place in the District of Columbia. What I tell all of my uh, team, uh, and we love our wellness centers. We re More recently, the newest wellness center was opened in Ward 1 down on Georgia Avenue. Uh, but we also challenge our team to make sure that wellness centers, while they offer a great lunch, that's not the only thing that you're going to get when you come here. You're going to get opportunities to connect to the rest of the city and opportunities to tell us um, what you need and want to stay engaged uh, in our community. So I talked longer than I should have, but I wanted to tell you what's going on. I wanted to wish you a happy 10th anniversary. And if I might, uh, if there are any questions, I'll spend a few minutes answering questions. Anybody have a question? No questions. Happy customers here at Hattie Homes in War 4. And that's what I like. But let me um, now make a, Patrice, if you would, uh, make a presentation to our team here at Hattie Homes. It says, whereas today the Hattie Home Senior Wellness Center is celebrating its 10th anniversary, Hattie Home Senior Wellness Center serves as the second home to hundreds of seniors, providing access to recreational activities, classes, and nutritional meals. Whereas the center opened its doors in 2007, it was originally named the Kennedy Senior Wellness Center, and legislation was passed to name the, in, this center in honor of Hattie Homes. The Hattie Home Senior Wellness Center has proudly served Ward 4 for 10 years. Therefore, I hereby congratulate the Hattie Home Senior Wellness Center on this special occasion and thank the facility for helping to enrich the lives of DC residents. Thank you. That was my payback. <laughs>